Thanks, everyone. The internet is a fundamental part of our daily lives, but have you ever really stopped to truly think about the cost you pay for this great service? When it was created back in the 80s, it was designed as a means of communication between distributed groups of people. It was not designed with privacy in mind. But now, with frequent data leaks, GDPR, and Cambridge Analytica, it's more, than, it's more important than ever to be aware of how privacy factors into the internet in this modern era. So let's take a look at what happens when you connect to the internet. Most people are aware that your computer connects to a router, to a modem, and then ultimately to the site you're trying to access. This means that if you're in a coffee shop, an evil owner can easily see all the sites you're accessing. Or if you're on your home trusted network, your ISP can see the sites that you're accessing and even manipulate the data. This can be problematic if you're dealing with sensitive data, you're a whistleblower, you're living in a country with an oppressive government, or in many other cases. So what can we do to protect this privacy? And why should you care? Many people might argue that they have nothing to hide. They might not care if their government or anyone can see that they're online ordering an eight-foot-tall teddy bear, for instance. But it's still important to care about your privacy, if not for yourself, for other people. If one person is taking steps to protect their privacy, they stand out as an anomaly. If everyone is doing it, it becomes the norm, and they're able to blend in. So care about your privacy. Most modern browsers ship with a feature called private browsing, which might sound like the perfect solution to all this. It keeps your browsing private. Unfortunately, the name's deceptive, and it really just keeps your browser from storing cookies, session data, passwords, so it's good if you're on a public machine. Your ISP and the rogue coffee shop owner are still able to see every site you're accessing and all of the data that you're sending there. So private browsing really is not that great of a solution. So what can you do to encrypt and hide this data? TLS encryption is probably the easiest and what, something that everyone should really be doing. You can recognize it from a green lock icon in the address bar or the HTTPS prefix. Uh, it's popular because you don't need to install any special software to do it. There are extensions like HTTPS Everywhere by the Tor Project and EFF that can help with this, but a standard browser can handle it. The downside is websites need to take steps to enable it, but fortunately most have done so by now. However, TLS does not prevent your ISP or other people from seeing the sites you're accessing. For that, if you, you'll want to take other steps. So if you go to your favorite search engine, Bing will happily show you that there are many proxies and VPNs that you can use. These will add a server in the middle so that your ISP will think you're connecting to that server instead of the actual website. A VPN will add encryption on top of this, and it will also affect your entire computer, not just the one browsing session. Tor takes this to the next level. It's a newer open source technology that will send your traffic to multiple nodes along the way, so no node nodes both the site you're connecting to as well as where you're connecting from. The nodes are located all over the world, and it has the downside of adding some extra latency to the connection. Um, using Tor requ also requires some specialized software, so there's a bit of a hurdle there, but Tor and TLS is a great way to protect your privacy in the modern web. Um, one of the downsides, I mentioned HTTPS Everywhere as a browser extension. There are lots of plugins for browsers and websites that add extra functionality. And these can be great, but they can also be an easy way to steal your data and send it to some third party malicious attacker who just wants to sell it. So it's really important to closely audit any extensions and plugins that you're using and disable the ones that you really don't need. Uh, even once you get to the website in question, there are lots of other risks. A lot of sites will try and track you. This can be done by forcing you to log in to get through a paywall. It can also be done through JavaScript or tracking pixels that try and track your activity across many different sites. And these can be really difficult to deal with. Disabling JavaScript, using a one-time um, disposable email address to sign up, or sending the do not track header can help alleviate some of these risks and make it so you can browse relatively anonymously without being tracked from site to site. So I've talked a lot about problems, but what would an ideal solution look like? It's important that it's distributed and decentralized. It needs to be open sourced so it can be properly audited. It needs to be impossible to censor, even by a government entity. And it has to be able to scale and have the proper usage incentives to really grow naturally. If this sounds like an interesting problem and something you're passionate about, you should check out ORCID, where we're really trying to solve this very problem and make the internet a more free place. Thank you.